Thank you very much, Bill. There aren't too many places more beautiful in the spring than Georgia. I'm glad to be here. Uh, thanks to the Georgia Center of the book, for the book, for inviting me. Uh, and thanks to you uh, for coming out this evening. You know, several years ago I came out with a book called Still Fighting the Civil War. And in the research for that book, uh, I found that religion was really central to uh, our culture here. Uh, it wasn't the first time I had uh, discovered that, but particularly for those who had fought in the war. Uh, and the second thing I discovered is that many of those who came home from the war on the Confederate side uh, came home maimed in mind and body. The war had a profound impact on them. And I thought, well, maybe the Yankees experienced the same thing. And maybe religion was important also, particularly evangelical religion. Uh, and maybe the Union soldiers also came home maimed in mind and body. Uh, and it's not surprising that the first treatise on what we call today post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, was written in 1876. Uh, and it dealt with Civil War veterans. So surviving the war did not necessarily mean surviving it whole. And so I wrote this book, America Flame. America Flame is dedicated to these men who fought and died, the men who came home, and the millions at home who mourned their loss. I opened the book with the following paragraph. Convent life no longer suited Sister Mary John. Born Elizabeth Harrison in Philadelphia, she had converted to the Catholic faith and entered the Ursuline Order at the age of 18 in 1824. By all accounts, Sister Mary John was a gifted teacher and musician. Now in the sweltering summer of 1834, at the Order's convent school in Charlestown, Massachusetts, she walked out. The oppressive heat, touching 14, for, teaching 14 45-minute classes a day, conducting music lessons, and attending to administrative duties as the mother assistant, all of this became overwhelming for her. She needed some time off. Now you may be wondering, what in the world does a missing nun have to do with the Civil War? Well, it has everything to do with the Civil War because Sister Mary John would soon become a victim of evangelical Protestantism. Born in the Second Great Awakening, which occurred at the beginning of the 19th century and swept throughout the country in the next several decades, uh, evangelicals converted hundreds of thousands of people with the simple message that if you give your life to Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you will be saved. Now, the problem I encountered in researching the origins of the Civil War was not in this very simple and uh, beautiful message of evangelicals, but in the fact that evangelicals brought this message into the political process. And Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the uh, First Amendment to the Constitution with the help of James Madison, was crystal clear on the role of church and state. Uh, in 1802, uh, the Congregation of Baptists in Danbury, Connecticut, sent Thomas a letter. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could send an email to the Founding Fathers and get a response back? And, and in this, this case, uh, they wonder, well, what exactly did you mean that Congress shall make no law, a law establishing religion? Well, what does this mean in practice? Uh, and, and he says here um, that uh, adhering to this expression of the supreme will of the nation in behalf of the rights of consciousness as he goes on. Well, what he says, that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus, building a wall, a wall of separation between church and state. 
Now here we have a picture and there's something wrong in this picture and many of you can recognize what is wrong in this picture because this is a picture of a nun holding her child. <laughs> and most of you know that that probably doesn't work too well, at least in the Roman Catholic Church. The nun is Maria Monk and Maria Monk wrote this book called The Awful Disclosures of Maria Monk. Uh, right at the time, around the time that Sister Mary John disappeared. Uh, and in this book, she talked about priests ravishing her in her convent, uh, hence the, the child. And, and when you went down into the basement of the convent, you opened a pit, and there were the uh, bones of uh, aborted infants as a result of the ravishing of the priests, uh, the nuns. Well, turns out uh, everything that Maria Monk wrote in this uh, novel, or actually memoir, called The Awful Disclosures of the Hotel Dieu Nunnery, uh, everything was false. There was not a word of truth in it, but it became a bestseller. In fact, in fact, it was the nation's number one bestseller, because New York Times wasn't around then, but it became the nation's number one bestseller until Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin displaced it in the 1850s. Uh, and you know, never underestimate the ability of the American people to believe almost anything. Uh, well, uh, w what happened to Sister Mary John is that uh, Protestant working men in, in Charlestown, Massachusetts became so exercised over her disappearance that they burned down the convent. Uh, this is the Ursuline convent uh, in flames. But they were less concerned really about Sister Mary John than the fact that the convent was built on a hill right next to Bunker Hill. And we all know Bunker Hill is a pretty sacred site of the American Revolution. And here you have this Catholic convent. Not only that, but this convent had 60 pupils, all girls, because girls could not get an academic education uh, in Boston. The only place they could get an academic education, learn about history, learn about science, learn about math, learn about literature, was in the Catholic schools. So you had 60 students, 60 students in this convent, 50 of them were Protestant girls. And as we all know, if Protestant girls go to Catholic schools, they all become Catholic, right? That's what happens to them. Well, this was the fear of the Protestant working men. And it was a time of increased Irish Catholic immigration. And the fear was that the Irish Catholics would overturn American democracy. Why? Well, because they would owe their allegiance to the Pope in Rome and not to the President of the United States. Not only that, but the Roman Catholics would not adhere to democratic forms because they were accustomed to hierarchy. They were accustomed to deferring uh, to the superiors in the church. So Lyman Beecher, and you may have heard that name, Lyman Beecher, whose daughter was Harriet Beecher Stowe, and his son was probably the greatest evangelist of his age, uh, Henry Ward Beecher, moved his family from cozy New England out to the raw frontier town of Cincinnati because he wanted to save the West from Roman Catholics. And he erected a, a seminary uh, in Cincinnati, but he came back to Boston periodically to stir the mob, and he was the guy who preached the night before that this convent should be burned down. Now this occurred at a time uh, when the Westward Movement had just begun. And the Westward Movement had sort of a, a sacred element to it, particularly among evangelicals who believed that God had chosen America to be the new nation of Israel, that America was God's chosen nation. And part of being chosen was to span a continent from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. This was not only a responsibility for American citizens, but they were doing the work of God. And you can see here on, on this uh, painting uh, that appeared in 1861, you can see the, the cross on the, uh, on, on the rock, uh, perhaps. Let me get my laser out, make sure I don't, don't point it at anybody, but you can see. Uh, see the cross on the, uh, on the rock. Th this was a sacred duty. Well, of course, in the West you had Indians and Mexicans living there, but that did, didn't matter uh, because they were not of God's anointed people. Uh, so they could be pushed uh, out of the way. Well, in 1848, uh, revolutions occurred uh, throughout Europe. Uh, and Americans were very excited about this because until 1848, the United States was really the only democratic nation in the world.